Hello again everyone, Kony is here. Tonight I'm flying from Dallas-Fort Worth to Austin, Texas. Flying a Beechcraft 350i King Air. I have set a flight level of 4,000 feet. And let's go ahead and get started. Parking brake off. Let's head down the runway. Okay, I've taken off. A little bit of a bumpy start. Flaps up. I think I put the flaps up a little bit early. Uh, landing gear up. And I'm going to PFW get us tower, KH, tree, 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 on heading, turn over to autopilot. Looks like a beautiful clear night here in Dallas. Okay, so let's turn into our flight path. Engage autopilot. I can do two things at the same time. Here. You are leaving my airspace frequency change approved. And yaw damper. DFW tower KH tree 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 frequency change. Regional approach KH tree tree tree, tree is type Beechcraft King Air four miles south yeah, of DFW damper. three thousand feet. Request clearance to transition there we go. Bravo okay. airspace. That was that yellow warning. KH tree 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 regional approach. Squawk 5347. Squawk 5347, KH337. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and hit KH3, 3, 3, altitude hold mode. A little abrupt, I guess. The plane can be a little twitchy. Cleared through the Bravo airspace, KH333. Uh, but it would be nice to stay at this altitude. All right, now the plane is getting us on to a perfect heading. Let's go ahead and go outside, look around. Wow, look at all the lights, all the stars. I'm going to grab the three or the Xbox One controller. Okay, I'm all right, we're leveled off. I'm going to drop throttle. We're Getting up to speed, get heading towards the red zone. I'd rather have some safety margin there. The sun looks like it went down about a half an hour ago or so. There's a stadium down there. AT&T Stadium, okay. Two engines sound like they're humming very nicely. Engines at around 70%. So we're good. So not much to do except kind of look around. Um, I will drop into the drone. And set some things up. It's always a little bit too slow. And let's, let's stay connected to the plane for now. But I can come down and we could check out some of this stuff a little bit better. 
like this airfield here. Looks like uh, emergency vehicles on the ground there. Or maybe beacon lights or something. Alright, well, let's uh, get some altitude, get an overview of the area. Let's just briefly check with the plane. Speed's good, altitude's good. Heading's good. Okay. See another landing strip off in the distance there at the center of the screen. And yet another one there. That's what those uh, pulsating lights are. And a lot of stars. Don't really see the moon anywhere. There's so much, uh, I guess, urban light pollution or whatever that you can see, but once we get past this area, it's probably going to be super dark outside. Oops, okay, what I wanted to do was head over towards these red lights. It's probably a set of transmitters or something. Hmm. Again, check with the plane. Okay, we're good. Not hearing any radio traffic. Not really seeing any other players either. I do have it set to live weather, live players, uh, real airline traffic. Um, this is one of the busiest airports. Now I do see something flickering over here, but I don't know if that's an airplane or... I don't know, a twinkling star? I don't know, that doesn't seem likely. Yeah, it's something close by. I have tagging turned on. Maybe it's too far away to, to tag. Maybe that got turned off by accident. Okay, I've almost made it to these lights. I'm going to check in with the airplane again. Perfectly steady air at night, so no problems with turbulence or anything. I thought I just heard a bird. I don't know if that was in the game or real life. Yeah, that's in game. Unless that's an airplane thing. No, nope. seems fine. I've almost made it to these red dots, so I just want to know what are these? Just some just some kind of beacons, I don't know. Um Kind of makes you think it's safe to stay out of this area. Alright, well anyway, let's go back to the plane. I'm going to go back inside. It's quieter in here. Alright, so let's, let's dim the 350 eyes lights a bit. Uh, cabin light. Okay, so I'd like to be able to see that. This one is what? Can't really tell. Uh, Co-pilot. 
Trying to decrease the ambient light in the room, I feel like. It's just a little bit too much ambient light in here, but maybe it's. Maybe this level is just fine. And then the avionics are a little loud. Let's see here. Okay, I think. I think they got dimmer, so kind of hard to tell. Or maybe they got brighter. Oh, oh okay. There we go. It's a little on the dim side. Let's just turn that up a tad. It's different panel. I wonder if that's the backlighting. Or maybe it's uh, backup. Maybe it's these lights right here. I don't know. Can't see anything changing while I'm toggling it. Okay, engine speed good, altitude good. See if I can find a nice out the front window view here. Look around a little bit on the inside. Not really much to see, just a lot of lighted streets, obviously. Uh, so I don't know how interesting that is, but. Good to get experience flying at night. I always find it a little scary. I was a little nervous to take off. I mean, obviously it's a video game, but you don't want to have to go through the whole loading screen again and whatnot and start over. Uh, start the recording over, all that kind of stuff. So. That's kind of a dramatic shot. It's too bad you can't put the uh, people in the picture without using the drone. So pretty much uh, Garmin is flying the plane at this point. There's not really much to do except be prepared to respond to changes such as wind or whatnot. Um, the wind could change and the engines could head up towards the wrong speed, so would want to avoid that. basically staying inside because it's quieter in here, but we can see more out here. to the co-pilot for taking care of tower communications. Okay, I do feel like looking around a little bit more. Uh, also, it's a good idea to touch the controller occasionally because I found that if it times out and disconnects Bluetooth, the game will pause for 10 seconds or something. Uh, which is not very nice. Could you 
used to barely see anything inside. I could uh, go back inside and turn the lights up a little bit. So that would be the overhead flood. In fact, we'll turn the pilot and co-pilot overhead floods all the way up. There we go. I can see something. Looks like Obama and Biden. Seeing those panels in there. Going to one three five decimal two five generic zero Juliet Papa. Don't know how much detail you'd be able to see. Can't zoom in anymore. Okay, it feels like the wind's starting to get a little choppy, but still it's okay. I'm going to go back turn those lights back down because it makes it impossible to see outside if those are all right down. Uh, leave that one on one step and turn that one all the way off and see if that's good enough. I think that's good enough. All right, so there's the default view, um, but I would like to do a little bit more exploring from the inside here. Another landing strip over here. I should be able to zoom into that. It kind of also looks like a bridge, maybe? I don't know. I'm seeing a bunch of lights. I guess that must be a major freeway in the area here. Or at least city city streets. Freeway wouldn't probably have a bend that severe. back outside again. Just kind of want to take advantage of being able to see what's around even though it's nighttime. It'd be better if it was a full moon out. It'd be easier to see. Strange, I find the air traffic and the traffic control talk soothing for some reason. Maybe years of listening to scanners, scanner radios. Now, no moon, so we're not going to get any kind of nice reflection off the plane. I think it must be a plane and not a twinkling star because I wouldn't expect them to bother with that.
Here we are back at the drone at its original distance from the plane, but we can go along here and check things out. Another blinking light I'm kind of curious about. I guess it's part of this airport here, though. All right, so if I let off the control, this is airplane speed, and then if I push forward on the left stick, then we're going at like triple that speed or something. Tiger Beard Field, all right. Go reset the drone. Go back to the external view, check the instruments, everything looks the same. No changes. Go back inside. Do a little bit more looking around. There's not much really to do. Suppose a pilot would have internet access up here, potentially, so that's a possibility. Temperature. 53 degrees, that's just pretty warm. I still wonder what happens if you turn this on. It's apparently operative. I don't... You know, you wonder if... Uh, AI planes will come looking for you. Okay, this is nose against the glass, I guess, basically. Again, just really not much to see at night, just the uh, lit up streets. I don't even know how much there would have been to see during the day, either. Just a bunch of houses, maybe, in some places. Whoa, okay. I 
That is a cool view out the windows in the back. I don't know if I can get an equivalent view on the right side. Oh, maybe, maybe something's possible. I see something. Oh well. Go back outside, look around a little bit more. Have to remember to reverse orientation sometimes. Kind of wonder what field that is. I think everything's level out here. I don't think I have to worry about any obstacles. Nope. Looks like we're fine. I think I could even drop altitude. Let's go down to 3,000. So, dial this down to 3,000. Flight level change. Pull back on the throttle. this display much, but it's basically going to be the same as your VFR map. Uh, there's probably a bunch of stuff you can actually do here, I just haven't, haven't learned about it. Uh, oh, interesting. I think that's us. Hopefully that's us. Alright, we've leveled off, so I can go back to former throttle. Get back up to around 230 if we can. Which was at about 70%. now, so it'll probably be a bit much. Well, actually, I'm at the center detent, so I was a little higher than that before. Maybe reading this wrong. Maybe it's this value I'm interested in right here. It's easier to see outside. Yeah, this is the value. I had it 71 before, so I'd rather see if I can get to that point. There we go. There's buttons above that aren't showing up, or maybe that's just the way that system works. Oh, I see. It was just a view thing. Um, kind of wonder what you can do here. This looks like zooming in and out. Um, it's nice to see the airplane light or the uh, airport layout. That's handy. I hadn't seen that before. Okay, I don't want that. I have to hope that the co-pilot deals with that. <laughs> the way I found to get rid of those panels is you have to switch to one that toggles itself and then it'll toggle off. So track, what does that do? What does this do? aren't doing anything, they're probably just enunciators, a dent, a 
heard green. I'm not sure what green means here. I can't toggle it back off. Probably doesn't matter. Cancel? Okay, that worked. Can you actually click here? I felt like something changed when I did that, so I better be careful. I don't know if that did something. Oh, you can have a split view. Okay, well that's pretty cool. Oops. That's actually pretty handy. I could use that. Um, <laughs> I don't know how one gets to a menu of any kind. If I wanted to switch this around. Contact, green approach on 120.07. 120.07 decimal zero seven for KH tree tree tree. Gray approach KH tree 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 three. Okay, I just found the air, aircraft button, just center, recenter you. KH tree tree tree, gray approach, continuous plan. Altimeter, 200 decimal 902. Alright, we're not too far away. Alright, so I didn't mean to didn't mean to do that. Alright, so maybe the controls I need to use this thing are somewhere else. But it feels like it's a touch screen, so I don't how does one get into the actual menus? Um, maybe you don't want to do that while you're flying. Okay, I see a control here that appears to be related to that, so... Let's see if we can get in a better position to read what that says. Oh, it's, those are interoperative. I can't switch them. Shoot. That would have been nice. Okay, that's fine. I don't need to, I just thought it'd be fun to look around in the menus. Back to our drone, but now we're right at the plane again. The stars are becoming more numerous. Must be the Andromeda Galaxy. Hmm. Really cool to be able to move a camera independently of the plane. A little easier to see interesting stuff at night. I mean, uh, at daytime, though, of course.
being a ghost on someone else's airplane. Yeah, the camera en enters a certain zone and then you're inside and the people disappear. It's kind of interesting to see the relative motion between the two free-floating objects here. Speed's good, altitude, uh, I'm going to drop another 1,000 feet as we get close to landing. I'll stay at 2,000 for landing purposes. Okay, so at this point I think I will take over for autopilot. Let the co-pilot work things out with the tower for landing. KH333 contact Austin approach on 127 decimal Course, it immediately gets less stable, but that's okay. Austin approach KH three 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 two thousand. He's leveled off, so I'm gonna speed up a bit more. KH three 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 Austin approach. Continue as planned. Altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two. Really don't want to be gaining any more altitude at this point. Alright, so we're getting close. I'm going to go ahead and start slowing down, get ready to put the flaps down. See a couple Austin aircraft in front of us here. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. It does look like I need to turn name tags back on. Cleared through the Charlie airspace. Cleared through Charlie airspace KH333. I don't know the airspace designations, but I used to live near an airport, and when I tried to fly my drone, it warned me that I was in a tr Charlie airspace, which was a five mile radius circle around Oakland Airport. All right, I'm going to drop throttle even more because we really want to get some speed down and then turn those, f put those flaps down. We'll be landing very shortly. Don't want to put it all the way down. And if I... And we're dropping too much in altitude actually, now that I notice, so I can get rid of some of that speed now by... nosing up, and the flight director is actually telling us how to get back up to altitude. That's nice. Okay, good. So we are dropping down into flaps territory. Um, first thing I'm going to do is put down the landing gear. I 
Alright, and then put the flaps down. I think they're only down halfway. Had to push hard on the stick while we slow down. Alright, when we're about 10 miles out, the co pilot will make contact. Going significantly slower than we were, we will have to speed down some more. I mean, slow down some more. Um, just trying to maintain altitude here. I could afford to actually lift up a bit, burn off a little bit more speed. Not too much. Flight director's handy. I didn't realize it worked on altitude hold mode. Um, so it's sort of like a semi autopilot, be good for training. Southwest Niner, one two descent and maintain 2,500 feet. All right, happy with both of our both our speed and our okay, altitude at this point. Traffic is two o'clock, four miles at 3,300 feet generic. Report them in sight. I see them. KH tree 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 traffic in sight. And so did the co-pilot. Austin Tower KH tree 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 is one zero miles north with whiskey to land. KH tree 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 Austin Tower. Fly straight in runway one seven right. Altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two wind two two zero at five. Make straight in runway one seven right KH tree tree tree. Alright, there's the landing pattern. Let's head over there. I do want to learn how to use ILS. This plane may have that built in, I'm not sure. Uh, but I would like to learn how to use that. Coral probably has tutorials on that. One of my favorite flight simulator YouTube channels. I got a cramp in my feet, so I'm going to take my legs off of the pedals for now. And my flight stick does have rudder built in if I twist it, so I can deal with that without pedals if I have to. Alright, not trying to gain too much altitude here, but that's okay. We're still in a good range. We're going too fast. I'm going to put the flaps down more. Push hard on the stick while we slow down and turn. And watch carefully the speed because it's going to want to stall very easily. We're not careful. Uh, but it looks like a good speed, looks like a good approach into the landing pattern. Looks like the runway is straight ahead, hey, so that should be straightforward. Clear to land runway 17 right, KH tree tree tree. I don't know if I'm supposed to turn on landing lights or if that's co-pilot may be handling that. I'm not sure. Um, I think I turned the assist for those off. I probably should be keeping track of that. Really more focused though on smooth damage-free landings. That's the most important thing. My last several landings have been very rough no damage to the plane that I could tell, but just not a nice, smooth, soft feather landing on the ground kind of landing. I 
but this feels good. It feels like the wind is clear. Not, not, not sensing any kind of wind at all. Not sensing any ground effects. I still need to learn more about what those are, how they work, how they affect you, but occasionally I do have, um, you know, suddenly feels like I'm getting bursts of air from the ground in various different directions, probably eddy currents or something, wake, kick back, who knows. Okay, I think I feel like I should get a little bit more centered here, I'm not quite in line with the runway, so drop throttle just a little bit more. We do need to be going slower than this when we land. Okay, so I'm going to try to avoid harsh adjustments because I have a tendency to make bad micro adjustments as I'm coming right in. Alright, so we'll just head over here and just try to float. We're right at the stall point. All right, we didn't bounce. I mean, a little tiny, tiny little bounce, but all right. And if we've got the rudder under control, the brakes under control with the flight stick. All right. So where is this taxiway? I'll be able to see it on the Garmin. I can't really see it outside. Uh, we're going a little fast, but it's not too bad. Flaps need to be up. If you don't put the flaps up, you risk kind of losing traction on your tires as you slightly lift off. Okay, I see what looks like an exit up here, so let's head over in that direction. I am using the pedals, back to using the pedals. Okay, here's our guide, so that will help. So yeah, my goal has been to be get comfortable with flying at night, also landing from within the cockpit, and doing both together is kind of amazing. One of my very early flights was successful doing that, but I didn't know quite as much about what I was doing as I do now. I recently got the 50-hour flying achievement, which I'm proud of, but I mean, that's... Ooh, I was exiting. And then the thing went away. Sounds like somebody with a Harley just went by. Going to one two one decimal nine or KH. That's actually uh, in real life, huh? Okay, so I stopped. Let's put the parking brake on for a moment. Contact ground and ask for taxi to parking. Austin ground KH three 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 taxi to parking. Taxi to General Aviation Parking using Taxiway Charlie Alpha. Taxiway Charlie Alpha, okay. Taxiing so to General Aviation Parking via Taxiway Charlie Alpha KH33. I see our arrows. Let's go ahead and get started in that direction. I just, I love the sound of those twin engines. It's just, it's, I don't know, I, I think I feel like I could fall asleep listening to those. Probably a bad thing if you're a pilot. All right. Well, we're going at reasonable taxi speed, so that's good. Um, I can actually drop that all the way down. I think idle is enough to keep us rolling forward. I may have to actually slow it down even more. Uh, you know, it's two engines pulling us forward. I I'd like to try taxiing sometime with just one and see if, if it makes sense to turn one off as soon as you land or just use the other for taxiing. It may not make sense, but I thought it would be interesting to try. Okay, let's slow down a little, pivot on the left brake, a turn. And I think the idle is going to just keep us rolling forward if I don't make the turn too, st too stark. Alright. 
my flights wouldn't necessarily be comfortable for passengers, but I, you know, I'm only happy if the plane is upset. I'm sorry, I'm only uh, you know worried if, if whether or not the plane is upset about the flight at this point. I assume at some point they might have AI passengers or you know start a shuttle service or something. I've seen plugins like that. So again, I think we're going at a reasonable taxi speed. I could probably go a little faster. I'm supposed to stay around 20. I feel like that's where we're at, but it feels a little on the slow side. <laughs> 4K really makes a huge difference because uh, I could just I can read all the controls on the dashboard without having to zoom in. It's just it's amazing. Okay, that's going too fast. But I think if I go to idle we'll just roll along at the right speed. Airports are huge, so this always takes a very long time. I see a truck going by on the right side. Could take a peek outside. This isn't really piloting, it's just driving. I am trying to stay in the cockpit for any kind of serious flying to make that the realistic learning experience that it should be. I need to adjust these pedals. It seems like per aircraft I may have to have a pedal profile. Because uh, I had it set working great on the, s the Cessnas, and as soon as I switch to the Beechcraft, I get just it gets twitchy. The dead zones, there's a dead zone that I don't intend to be there, so I'll have to figure that out. Okay, so we're going faster than normal taxiing, but I think we're fine. There's nobody else around. It's taking a long time. Flaps are down, so we're not going to lift off back to it. I have had that happen. So here we are in Austin, Texas. I've never been here. I have been to Dallas. I've been to San Antonio. Alright, I see our parking spot waiting for us. Go take handle the rest of this from the inside for realism. I'm going to slow down. This is a bit too fast. All right. Flight director is still trying to get us up to 2,000. It looks like that's because nav is on. No. I'm not sure why that's actually still on. Oh well. Oh, altitude mode, right, of course. There we go. I still see the flight director, but now it's not changing from the aircraft's own yellow arrow. You really begin to get a sense for when you go flying, it seems to take forever after you land, before you get to the gate. You really get a sense for that coming into these airports and taxing to parking, which is always super far away for general aviation. Anyway, I can sustain this speed for a bit. Alright, so this will be another time when I start to turn with the rudder and then pivot uh, with the right brake to do a nice swing around, slow down. Still perfecting it, but it seems like that's meant to be used that way. Uh, it's especially important if the rudder's not giving you enough turn and you've got to turn, you can suddenly pivot on one of the wheels and get the turning done.
Alright, so we are almost here. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit more. I don't want to roll in too fast. Alright, so this will be another tight turn. Pivot on the right. It's confusing because you have to push with one foot and push a different on a different axis with the other one. Alright, nice pivot. We're going nice and slow. Nice big parking spot for this bigger plane. Do we have dudes? I don't see... Oh yeah, there is a dude. Okay. I have to go over that way a little bit, I guess. Okay. So we need to slow it down. Idle will take us to the right spot. And right there. Perfect. Parking brake. Engine cooldown. If I can remember how to do that. That one, maybe. There we go. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next 4K video.